Hello, I'm Lux, and oh my god. And I'm Ember, oh, sweet Celestia. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 18, Yakety Sax, Don't Talk Back. Um, what happened? Uh, we shoehorned the return of Pinkamina. The main six were so in the wrong here that... What? <laughs> yes, she was terrible at playing the Yavidaphone, and yes, she was making other people miserable. That does not mean that she shouldn't do it. Because the lesson that you're getting in the early part of the episode is if you're not good at something, you should quit. Because that's what her friend said. You've been practicing for months and haven't gotten any better. Therefore, you should stop. So you are only allowed to do things that you are good at. Regardless of whether or not you're enjoying them, you can only do what you're good at. Just, it's just, I mean, I'm usually okay with bad Pinkie Pie episodes, but this was just bad. I mean... I was cringing the entire time. There were some parts that were funny, but most of the time I was like, ugh. Because, okay, Twilight, you're one of the most powerful unicorns ever, even before you got your princess upgrade. All you had to do was put up a sound barrier so that nobody heard Pinkie Pie while she was practicing. Problem solved. Pinkie Pie could practice and enjoy it, and those who were hurt by the sounds and hated hearing it wouldn't have to hear it. It would be the equivalent of in the human world practicing in a soundproof room, which is what you often do with musical instruments, if you have the resources. I remember walking past rooms in the college I went to that were soundproof, that people were playing the piano or on a trumpet, especially if you ask Pinkie Pie, like, would you mind practicing in a soundproof bubble? I'm pretty sure she'd be like, oh yeah, that's fine. Oh, she'd probably be like, but why? Well, you're so enthusiastic that it's a little overboard. Or, uh, not, you know, she would have trouble with not everyone enjoys your playing, but not everyone enjoys your playing is a truthful statement, which was what they were trying to to go for, supposedly, because we had the kickback to the whole thing of not telling Celestia she was a bad actress. No, you need to tell Pinkie Pie she's not good at this. Yes, you can share constructive criticism. You know, Pinkie Pie, I'm not really hearing any difference in your playing between now and when you started. Are you sure this is how a Yuvitaphone is supposed to sound? Also, where was Yona this entire episode? You have a yak at the school. Yak culture is all about yak things. So wouldn't Yona be an expert about the Yavidaphone? Even if she didn't know how to play, wouldn't she know how one sounded and how it should sound? I was waiting for them to bring Yona in and have a connection between Yona and Pinkie Pie develop. And Yona to confirm that, oh yeah, this is how they sound all the time, isn't it great? And everyone were like, <laughs> Or for her to actually be a really good Yavidaphone player and teach Pinkie Pie. Because the music we heard on the record players every time we've gone to the Yak Kingdom has sounded very nice. So was that a Yavidaphone? Be interesting to go back to those episodes and compare that recording to the Yavidaphone player at the bar. Hmm. That would be interesting to do. Though probably one of our commenters, a specific Sasami Chan, will probably already know. I'm sure they will. Also, welcome to all of our new subscribers, all two of you. As of this recording, by, by the time this posts, there may be more of you. Also welcome. Very welcome. Okay, like, oh, it, it's like, how much do we want to say about this episode? Because it's almost all negative. It's just... Uh, I can't remember the good parts right now because it's actually been a couple of days. We've been busy since we've actually watched the episode. Yeah, and we couldn't really bring ourselves to go back and do it again. We knew we'd hit our main points, 
I mean, she's so enthusiastic and that's wonderful, but so many negative nitpicks, like, um, going back to good things, everything with mod. I have done that. People go, can I ask you a question? You just did. <laughs> Deadpan, just like that. Uh, yeah, mod is almost always gold. I, I can't think of any time she isn't, except when she's granite. Ah, uh, I thought you mean when ponies take her for granite. Ooh, it's even better. Hi, hoof. <laughs> oh, yeah, I completely forgot about Mod. Like, the rest of the episode kind of erased that from memory. <laughs> Maybe you could help me remember some stuff. Please, more good parts. We need them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that Mod had all of Pinkie Pie's stuff, and Rarity kept going, I'm sorry, Ma I can't possibly have heard you correctly. You didn't just say that Pinkie Pie left for Yak Yakistan and is never coming back. <laughs> Thank you. It's all coming back to me. <laughs> uh, song reference check. <laughs> uh, yeah, that one's a bit newer than the one referenced in the episode title. I don't know why the Mean Six didn't see this coming. Because Pinkie Pie clearly stated, you know, when they asked her to give up, you mean this thing that I love more than anything and makes my life worthwhile? I, I thought happiness in others was that thing. You know, the song back in... I believe it's season two. <laughs> yeah, the the smile song. So you would think that Pinkie Pie would have come to the realization that her playing was not bringing smiles and realize that on her own and perhaps be going through her own existential crisis that this thing she loved wasn't making people happy and what could she do? Oh my God, that's such a better episode concept. Why didn't they do that? I don't know, because then once again, either the main six could help her, Sound Bubble, or Yona, teach her. Or she could go on a pilgrimage up in Yakistan and find, like, their Shambhala, Shamb can't say that word. Shangri-La. Shangri-La, where a um, yak is sitting there, and she goes and asks him, how do I become better at the Yavitaphone? Yavitaphone? Why not that? Much better episode. A lot more opportunities for good comedy with Pinkie Pie. Especially physical comedy while she's climbing the mountain. Carrying her Yavitaphone. She may even have to like give up her Yavitaphone to help rescue someone on the way up or down or something. Yes, there's a lot of parts to it. To have to use it for parts. Somewhere along the journey. Yeah, you know, just something other than what we got. Yes, and continuing nitpicks. Pinkie, that Yavitaphone in the bar was not yours. Hmm. And that's a mouth instrument. <sighs> that reminds me of an episode of Monk. Good show. I did watch it sometime. It's all out there. They did a great way of wrapping up the ending. But going back to the episode I'm thinking of, Monk gets to play with a band he really likes. And he has, I believe it's a recorder? I can't remember the exact instrument. I just know it was a mouth instrument. And he was all ready to play it. And for some strange reason, the sound test engineer needed to test the mic, and he grabbed the recorder and blew into it before Monk was about to play in the band. So Monk couldn't play the freaking flute because the guy put his mouth on his instrument. It's a mouth instrument. Why would the sound engineer even do that? Yeah, if you need to test the mic, I don't know, speak into it? Or have Monk play it a tone for you? Or any of the other band members make a sound? Because if you're doing a sound check, you shouldn't be right by the microphone. One, it's not yours, barring without permission. Two, mouth instrument. I've seen how much spit those things collect. I've been friends with lots of people who were in a band. Well, a band at school, not a rock band. It's not one of those things you typically share. Yeah. If you do, you end up swapping more spit than a couple. Or you actually swap the mouthpiece. They are removable. For cleaning purposes, thank goodness. And then the ultimate cop-out, that the Yavitaphone is the instrument of happiness. So what matters is your emotional state when you play it, not how it sounds. So that horrible sounding noise that Pinkie Pie was making was just as valuable to the yaks as the beautiful melody we were listening to when the ponies first came into the bar. 
that makes absolutely no sense. I get the message they were trying to go for. That it's about having fun, not about being the best, which is a good message. But the way you portrayed it was a cop-out. Because now Pinkie Pie has absolutely no incentive to get any better. Because by Yak standards, she's amazing. Because playing the Uvidaphone makes her happy. I don't know why, but I'm suddenly getting images of the episode of Futurama where Fry gets the devil's hands so he can play this particular instrument just right. And the only reason Fry gets his human hands back is because the devil can't stand Fry's hands. I don't remember that one, but I wasn't a consistent viewer. Neither was I. That was just one of the, my favorite episodes I actually watched and had time to watch. That and the one where Bender becomes God, but hey. As you can tell, we absolutely love this episode. It was great. Yes, yes, because the return of Pink Amita, but not nearly as impactful as the first appearance of Pink Amita. I would be fine with her mane having been all flattened out because that was the whole cheese sandwich episode. But they took it all the way to mane flattened and no color. So they took the Discord version of colorless plus the flat mane version. Hmm, that's also a good point. Could we, should this technically be called an appearance of Pink Amina? Hmm. Because Pink Amina's crazy. And this was just severely depressed. Yes, I know depression is a medical disorder. Go back and rewatch Party of One. The two are on completely different levels. One was talking to turnips, which are quite tasty. And was serving cake to a bag of flour. Oh boy. Just think about that on many levels, then stop yourself. It's not going to be a pleasant ending. Speaking of endings, should we wrap ours? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because there was just a lot of potential here, and it feels... I think the problem is that we can think of so many ways that this could have gone better in our opinion, which always detracts from an episode when you go, hmm, I would have liked it better if they did this. A good example where I put this, in writing, I think it's actually worse than that one episode with all the romantic tropes in it. I actually have to say it's not as painful as that because I have this particular thing myself personally with romantic tropes because I've experienced all of them way too many and that particular episode happened to get the all of the ones I don't like. <laughs> but writing, it was actually very sturdy. It was, it was well done. This one feels forced, contrived. The main six are idiots. I'm like, you're, you're not even doing it tactfully. You tried to do it tactfully by telling her, but... You didn't think it through. And then it took you a while to realize that you did a bad thing. And then you try to cheer her up with a party, which is her thing. So you're having a Pinkie Pie Appreciation Day, but you have no Pinkie Pie. Because you aren't even keeping close enough tabs to realize she skipped town. Oops. Is there anything else you'd like to go over? No, because we are not professional writers, illustrators, voice actors, or anything. And there's only so much to be gained by nitpicking and tearing apart someone else's creative work. Because, hmm, let's see, weren't we just complaining that the main six were... I get your point. So, outro starts now! And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Miss Magic, Season 8, Episode 18, Yakety Sax. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please click like, subscribe, share, comment below. Oh yeah, you have to ring the bell now. Also, check out other videos. If you've watched all our videos, wow, congratulations, you have no life. <laughs> When you're ready to leave YouTube, please check out the other links. There are links to Lux's art and commissions and ways to give us money like Patreon and coffee. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form 
you choose to grace us with your presence. 